Let's talk about it. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Uh, what is up, Badger fans? I, uh, on Wisconsin. I don't even know how to start this intro. I'm so annoyed. Um, what is up, Badger fans? This is Locked On Badgers, your team every single day. I'm your host, Ryan Herrings, as always. Today's show is brought to you by our friends over at FanDuel. FanDuel Sportsbook, the official sportsbook of Locked On. Make every moment more. Visit FanDuel.com slash Locked On today to get started. And if you had done that and taken Wisconsin minus four, you would have won some scratch today. All right, let's talk about it. Let's get Justin Rajiv in. A um, bunch of comments. This one this one hurts. Um, someone else start. I, it sucks. I mean, look, I think that let's let's take a little bit of positive out of it and understand that we just – we just competed once again with the number five team in the country, a team that on this show many times all of us have said we were just going to get rolled over, and we didn't. And, yes, they shot four of 19 from three, so that helped us. Uh, but we, we fought. We played hard. And I think we can all agree that we're just not good enough to beat a team like this. We're not good enough to close out games um, like that. And there's some good and there's some bad. So – I'm going to go with my bad first and just say this, like Tyler wall and Steven Crowell shot a combined three of 16. The two of them combined made three shots and played 66 minutes combined. Isaac Lindsay made three shots and played five minutes. So I just want to say, I really would good job. Isaac Lindsay way to get in there and play. And I think Max Klesmit, you know, if we're, we're not going to give a game ball away generally when we lose a game, but he deserves it. I mean, he had an unbelievable game. It was just, it was awesome. And I'm so happy with the way he played and the way he fought, the way he shot, he put the t- team on his shoulders and it was great to see. But I mean, I don't know if we can get it in the turn anymore, but I, I just feel like we've, we've lost so many close games and we're this close to being like 13 and seven in conference. I mean, that's how it's just so close, but we're just not good enough to be the team that can win these close games. But it is what it is, guys. Justin, before you get going, I, I want to throw two comments I saw up there. Then I want you to take off. The first one, both of them made me chuckle a little bit. The first one is from Jason Gelden. Enough with the positive guy. We lost another close game. <laughs> 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 you laugh. Jason, thank you for the comment, man. Um, hey, I'm, never- I'm being a little negative, Jason. What do you want from me? I love it. I love it. Um, that made me laugh a little bit. And then Old River Farm, agree, agree with you. Where was Lindsay in the second half? Um, and that's something we talked about. We did a live watch party, which was a lot of fun. I hope if we do another one, more people can join. That was I really enjoyed that, actually. But uh, before Justin gets going, I just want to agree with Rajiv there. You had a team struggling to hit buckets. You had a guy, even if he doesn't fit into your bigger picture game plan, he came in in the first half and played decisively. He was eight points, a couple big shots. It feels a little criminal not to give him a look in the second half when you're struggling for offense, and he was a clear spark in the first half. So that's I agree with Rajiv on that one with Isaac Lindsay. And if people watch the show, they know I'm not the biggest Isaac Lindsay fan, but I will I will take all the crow if he's out there making shots in the biggest game of the year. So I agree completely with Rajiv on that one. All right, sorry, Justin, I cut in there. Oh, that's fine. Um, also, between those two front court guys that played the 66 minutes, eight whole rebounds. Wow. In a game where we got killed on the offensive boards. Um, I'll say this. Guard is not a co- guy who coaches on instinct at all. Like he does, for better or worse, he's not going to play the hot hand. He's a guy who's not comfortable with it. Like Lindsay being out there, period, is a sign that he's unhappy with what's happening and he's he feels forced to because he's not a guy that's in the regular rotation. Neither is Hodges. Like he'll play him out of necessity because he's forced to, not because he's like, I need I need to try something here and change things up. He's not an instinct guy. He's not a guy who plays his gut in games. And this is a that's a move like Lindsay in the second half is a move that a coach that's coaching on gut and what he likes, what he's seen from a guy, makes that call. It's not somebody that like guard who's like, I I want my guys out on the floor who I think are my best players, and I'm for better or worse I'm going to go down swinging with them. I want to go here, um, and I think I agree with you a little bit there, Justin. I think guard does have an element of of coaching by 
by pattern, by routine, and not by instinct, right? I think we all saw Lindsey come in and provide a huge spark, and to me it was kind of shocking he couldn't get in the second half, and that felt mm-hmm. like a guard coaching by pattern, repetition, and not by instinct and flow. Um, mm-hmm. Definitely something that I, I want to dive into more. But I, I, I also want to go, and there's a comment up earlier, Rajiv, you already kind of hit on him. Um, I want to I'll talk a little bit more about Max Klesman. I, I don't want to just kind of use this as a throwaway mm-hmm. moment where we talk about him once and we move on. What we saw from Klesman tonight was some high-level stuff, finishing at the mm-hmm. rim opposite side of Edie. He created space on a three where he's able to jab step, step back, hit a big three. And we saw him kind of down the stretch, not only playing uh, point-of-attack defense, but running the offense, trying to get shots. This bodes really well for next year. Right. A lot of what we talked about this year, we we get very in the moment. This growth from Klesman, um, early in the year I was a little, I would I would say tepid with with Klesman. He has grown tremendously. Mm-hmm. And I think he's an above average Big Ten starter at this point. Not a star, mm-hmm. but a, an above average Big Ten yeah. starter. I think that's a big sign for next year. I, I wholeheartedly agree with that. I he's much better off the bounce than I expected. Um, I think he's a guy who has pretty good handle for for a, an off guard, and I think he's a guy we can legitimately expect to get us eleven or twelve points next year a game. I think that that's that's mm-hmm. an expectation that's reasonable with him. With high level defense, yeah, that's, that's with a good defense, that's a really good player. Yeah. <clears throat> when when we were looking, we were trying to at the beginning of the season, we were trying to figure out who our big scores were going to be outside of Chucky and and Tyler. And crowd to some extent, and and Klesitz really impressed us. I mean, he is he's grown throughout the season. He's gotten more confidence. I mean, the guy shot sixty three percent from the field tonight, sixty percent from three. He had three or four steals. I mean, th- he does the little things really well. He's very reliable, and I think I said it a couple shows ago. He's kind of becoming very similar to like what Brad Davison does. He's just like he's he's got that heart, and he's showing it in every game. And he's someone who we can depend on. And yeah, I mean, 19 points tonight, absolutely the best player on the floor for us. And, you know, I will say that, you know, guard was giving it to him late in late in the game. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was, he was putting it in his hands and, and, you know, bandaging kind of to, to what was, what he was seeing out there. And so I, I give him credit for that. I give him credit for at least trying to draw things up for, for Max near the end of the game. Now it didn't work necessarily. Sometimes we ended up just going to Chucky again, but just yeah, I mean, he deserves a lot of credit, and it's not just in the 19 points. It's a look at his entire stat line, look at everything he did, everything he contributes, and yeah, I mean, he's he's a guy that I'm really excited about already for next season. Yeah, I, I'm, last gonna, I'm gonna go ahead and answer this one. Good, I'm, no. I'll take my yeah. All right, Joey Peterson out there saying last week Justin said Klesman was a bench quality player. I I won't totally walk away from that. I think on like a, a elite eight type team. I think ideally you'd probably want him as your your sixth man, which on a, that type of team, if you look at the type of guys that we had in our final four runs, that's a really good player yet. But ideally you want somebody who's probably a tick up from Klesmet athletically. That doesn't mean that he can't be a, a starter on a very good team. It just means that you want to surround him with some guys that hide him a little bit and don't necessarily have to lean heavily on his athleticism. Yeah, I, th- I think with a guy like Klesman, you're always talking about, and this is true for for any player, you're talking about what's around them, right? If yeah. Klesman is your your number three or your number four, I think you can live with it if your top two are really good. Klesman can't be one of your top two players if you're yeah. going to be a real, real good Big Ten team. But he, I think he can be a really good three, which at the beginning of the year, mm-hmm. I, I yeah. wouldn't have said that. So mm-hmm. to me, that goes back to, listen, that's a win for guard. Right. We talk mm-hmm. about guard that doesn't alleviate all the other issues on the roster construction. Those are still there. But Klesman is a win for guard in the portal. I think we can confidently say that. Yeah. Now he needs to do more. Right. That's also true. Both of these things are true. Um, but that's my biggest positive from tonight is aside from this team, let me say this too. This team really, really played hard again. Like guard does have them playing hard. That's that's not a nothing burger. There's a lot mm-hmm. of teams that give up and fold when team when it gets a little oh, yeah. difficult. Um, well, we that, talked about it earlier in the season when when things started to kind of head down south a little bit when we had injuries that the way the body language and some of the things we were seeing from the team made us wonder if they would start to fold. And mm-hmm. to his credit, we have not seen that at all. This team has played really hard down the stretch and they've had to. See, Jason, I, I think he's better than Zach Showalter. Um, he's Max more Plus. skilled. He's more skilled oh, yeah. than Showalter. Showalter is a better athlete. Much better shooter. 
All right, we got to take a quick break, and then we're going to get into – we talked some positives. I want to talk some negatives as well. Um, late offense execution down the stretch, some of the shots we got. I think we got to talk about the Tyler Wall deep two, the Chucky Hepburn shots, the the coaching that goes into those moments because, listen, it, there's some there's some frustration here too. Plus, get into all your comments as well. We're going to talk about that more on Lockdown Badgers, but first we're going to talk about um, our first friend of the show today, which is a friend of mine, a friend of yours, a friend of us all, FanDuel. Um, we're past the midway point of the NBA season now. Um, we're past the All-Star game. The trades have kicked in. The players, the star players are on their new teams. Kevin Durant, Phoenix. Um, it's the best time to become a new customer if you haven't. You can get the no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. That's bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. Just download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Safe, secure, super easy to use. And you can bet on everything from money line, point spreads, uh, point scores, three-pointers made, rebounds, assists. And you can combine it all into a same-game parlay. If I were you, I would just bet on... Devin Booker, Kevin Durant, Chris Paul, DeAndre in same game parlays. Listen, I am I am hurting right now as a Badgers fan, but I'm excited as a Suns fan. But wherever you want to go, the Bucs are not a bad option, almost certainly. I would say they are the favorite right now in the NBA to win the title this year. So put some money on the Bucs, put some money on whoever you want. I'm betting with my heart, so I'm going with the Suns. Uh, plus, again, same game parlay, super easy to use. So don't miss the chance to use your no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back. Go to FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. That's FanDuel.com slash LockedOn to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports betting partner of the NBA. All right, let's get um, Bucks fan Justin and then also non-NBA guy Rajiv back on the show. <laughs> um, I mean, let's keep talking this this Badger game here. Uh, and Trevor Ver, Verhagen says, why couldn't we do what Purdue did to us tonight against Michigan? It clearly seemed to work. Foul at the end. Yeah, I mean, Trevor, that's a great comment. It hurts when you see the strategy that you wanted to be employed <clears throat> used against you so effectively, right? It really stings. For for those of you that were actually on the uh, live stream with us tonight, that was the comment that was made actually down the stretch. Like this is exactly what should have been done the last game, and it actually paid off. Like it it made it very high stakes and having to get it. Like you're not even you're not giving them the chance to get the the lead. So, I mean, it's it's really difficult when you're kind of putting a ton of pressure that we were just unwilling to do. You know, the late game stuff for me just <clears throat> was, I mean, I feel like I'm going to put this comment up here from Don't Badger Me. He says, well, two minutes left, didn't you guys just know we weren't going to win? Hate to say it, but we've seen it too much. And we, he's absolutely right. I mean, we had 57 points with, I think, three minutes and 45 seconds left, and we had the lead at that point. And I kept saying on the live stream, I'm like, we we just need a bucket. We need a bucket late in games to kind of stretch that lead. It's as soon as Purdue takes the lead, we're going to be playing behind them. And that's very difficult with our talent level. We need to be up right there. And I just, our inability to score late in games is really, really, I mean, it's been a problem all year. I think we saw Chucky once again do his patented fadeaway shot. And I, I appreciate his effort. I, I give him that. But there just has to be more than just the initial option. We had Klesman getting that for getting that ball, trying to drive in that initial option off the bench out of those timeouts. But as soon as that breaks down, nothing else is coming. There's they're, they're not trying to look for Connor. They're not trying to look for Klesman again. They're not trying to even go down low. They're just it's like give the ball to Chucky and let him work. And I I understand there's a time and place for that, but it can't be every every single time because the other team knows it's coming and he's taking off balance fadeaway jumpers from the baseline, which isn't a it's a very difficult shot. That is a very hard shot. And if it yeah. falls, it falls. But that just can't be the best shot. And the last thing I'll say about late game situations is the very last shot that Max Klesmick got. Glad he took it. That's fine. But 4.4 seconds, you you can go all, you can shoot, you can go drive, dribble all the way down the court and shoot right from behind the three-point line with 4.4 seconds. And there could have been something better. Now, we didn't have a timeout. I know that makes it harder, but it's just, I mean, we this don't badger me's comment is totally on point for me. I said it on the stream. I just I just knew it was gonna happen. We 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 can't get the bucket when we really need it. And when you can't get that late bucket, there's nothing you're gonna do. All these close losses that we've had, I put up a comment earlier about you know, our last five regulation finishes, like zero, two, zero. Like we've been close at the last five mm -hmm. games at the end of the regulation. We it was like that, last five losses. And that's it's it's becoming a habit now. And it's great that we're in those games, but it just shows that we're just not at that level that we can actually win them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the the Hepburn one. Let me let me let's continue on with that last um, 
couple minutes there. So you had the, the Tyler Wall deep two, which drove me nuts because that wasn't a force. I, that wasn't a situation where the shot clock was done. You, you didn't have to take that. That's a terrible shot in this situation. Absolutely atrociously low IQ basketball shot. And I, I, I'm a fan of Tyler Wall's game, but that's a terrible shot in that situation. And then those two Hepburn fadeaways, you know, we talked about it earlier in the game, again, on the live stream. If those are situations where Hepburn's been switched on to Edie, in those situations, take him out to the perimeter mm -hmm. and create and create in that space where you have more space and you can get a – basically, against Edie, he's going to be able to get an open three. Instead, yeah. dribbling into a mid-range and taking a contested fadeaway 15-footer on the baseline, mm -hmm. you're – it's a, that's another low IQ shot, and that's what frustrates me with Hepburn. Is he's a smart basketball player, but some of these shots are just poor shots and poor decision making. So you can get a better shot, um, and if you have Edie, take him on the perimeter and get a get a get a three maneuver for space there. What, Tyler Wall, don't take that wide open shot. You're wide open for a reason. You know it's those late game execution points where it's a combination of I think poor poor coaching, game planning, and some bad decision making from guys who quite frankly should be leading this team. So it's frustrating in that sense. Um, but to your point and to Don't Badger's Don't Badger Me's point, Rajiv, none of it was surprising. And that's maybe right. the most frustrating part. Yeah. When it comes to the last two minutes, I think we're all kind of in the same opinion. It's who's going to take a shot and who can actually get us a good shot mm -hmm. coming down. It's like we were talking about it coming down the stretch. Purdue was getting wide open looks. Like they're either mid range or threes. They they were wide open on every shot, and we were getting heavily contested jumpers that were fadeaways or whatever. Other than Klesmek getting that that backdoor cut that he ended up getting the layup on, that was the last time we saw anything that was a reasonable look. And and when you're playing that, like you're shooting shots that are twenty five percent shots versus the other teams that's shooting like sixty percent shots. That's that's not winning. That's not a winning formula. Guys, Logan Couch, I think we kind of touched on this, says uh, we're still going to make this tournament. Yes, sir. I mean, no. look, I am, as you all know, the optimist of this group. Like and I, I really, I don't, I don't think so. I, I just, I mean, I don't understand how a team that is 8 and 11 in their conference and maybe 9 and 11 if we beat Minnesota, how are they getting in? I honestly don't understand. I've looked at all the numbers. I've seen everything, the net rankings. I don't get it. I don't know why we're even listed in the in the last four in right now. I don't think we deserve it. If we beat Minnesota and we win a couple games in the tournament, yeah, I think we we will get in. But I just I just don't see it. I don't understand how we're even in this position. I really don't. I've looked at the numbers. I've looked at the the resumes. I I just feel like when you go, if you're, we're eight and eleven in our conference, guys. That's not good. And low key, looking at it. We better come to play against Minnesota. They just took down Rutgers tonight. That's a that's something to give them a little confidence boost. We better bring energy into that game because if we lose to Minnesota, I don't think it will matter what we do in the tournament unless we run all the way to the that. championship. That loss will absolutely dagger us. Yeah, I think, I, I think if we beat Minnesota, uh, and Ian S says because it's all because of the quad wins we have, quad, quad one wins, and that is true, Ian. Uh, it's a good point. If we beat Minnesota, I think you need to win at a minimum, like at an absolute minimum, one game in the tournament. At a minimum. If you win two, I think you're in. I think if you beat Minnesota and win two games in the tournament, you're in. If you beat Minnesota and win one, I don't know. And the other thing is, let me say this too, though. Let me say this too, because Rajiv, I hear you, and I hear there's other people who have made a comment like this too, this team doesn't deserve. When you're getting to the dregs of March Madness, no team has like a great resume. I think that's important to point out. I I agree with you on that. I think that's that's very true. Um, and I and I hear the quad one wins thing, and but I think that the, the tournament now we have to also look at where we're seated, because if we are in that initial first opening round where we're playing the, the final the last four teams in the conference, I don't think that that win is good enough, because you're you're just playing. I think if we're like the nine, we'll play the twelve or something like that. That's not like that's not what we that's want. Fair. Or the ten of the fourteen, eleven and fourteen, whatever it is. So. Yeah. If we get to the, if we're, if we have that, I think we have to be fifth from the bottom to get into that second day, if you will. If we win that game, which is probably be maybe against Illinois or something like that, then I think that that's a good enough win there. But yeah, I mean, I, I just, yeah, you're right. Like when you're getting to this, this the bubble, and the bubble is kind of weak right now, but someone on the bubble, and I don't, I haven't seen the score someone say, is gonna, run. someone's gonna make a run, someone's gonna to yeah. get a win that's gonna put them in. 
And this, obviously, tonight and Michigan, those two games were statements for us that had we won one of them, it really would have helped out. We have to beat Minnesota. That's automatic, obviously. And, yeah, I mean, it just depends on our seeding, who we who we play in the Big Ten tournament. If we can make a run in the tournament, sure, we'll get in. We're probably going to be a play-in game. I think the best we can do now is a play-in game in the tournament, which is the 11 or the 12 line. And, you know, we'll see what happens. But I, I, I said this to you guys before the show started. I think that based on how we've been playing these teams and how many close games we've had, I don't think anyone wants to see us in the tournament. I mean, we just took the number five team to, to you know, darn, darn near overtime. I just feel like we can beat any team. Are we going to? Probably not. But we obviously have kept it close. We keep it close defensively. We've got a lot of scrappy guys. And we have good three-point shooters that on their day can be really successful. So, I, I mean, obviously I hope so. I, I hate going into March Madness. I've only, only had one time in my fandom have, have we not gotten in. It would be crushing to not get in. But it is what it is. And I just feel like we're eight and 11. If we don't get in, I'm certainly not going to be like upset about it and say, Oh man, we were, we got, we got hosed. If we don't get in, we didn't get hosed because we're eight and 11 in our conference. So. All right, let's take a very quick break there. Get back with some of your more, your comments, some final thoughts, wrap it up. Um, one more quick break for our friends of the show over at built bar. I've talked about built bar a lot. It, they are my go-to nutritional source. They are what I use to try to eat a little healthier while still getting taste. So still getting some flavor in, um, 100% real chocolate, incredible flavors, churro, coconut. Uh, they have this almond flavor that's amazing. The churro is my favorite, though. They also have a marshmallow puff flavor, 100% real chocolate, uh, lots of protein, less than 200 calories, and something that tastes a little bit like a candy bar. My kids love it. I love it, but it's also healthy. It's hard to find that kind of dual threat where a lot of the, the protein bars, healthy bars out there, it feels like you're it feels like you're eating healthy. And right, that's always the holdup. Everybody wants to eat healthy, but you also want something that tastes fun, that's enriching, it, that is helping your palate get through the day. And Bill Barr has found that equation. Um, they've also blown up. No longer do you need to go online and order it. You can go to Walmart, get the four bar box at the pharmacy section, or go to Sam's Club, get that 13 bar variety box. You're going to thank me later. Built Bar, go get yours today. All right, let's bring uh, Justin Rasheed back on. As always, the the power duo here. Um, gentlemen, like, I guess I wanted to, to kind of ask this question. I, I saw a comment in here, something along these lines, and, and I've lost it, but as, assuming we all kind of know what this year is, right? We, we know that even if the Badgers get into March, like this team's not, they're not making a serious run in March, even if they win a game or two. Do you feel better about next year based on what you've seen these last couple games, either from Connor, from Klesman, or do you feel like this team, this team needs help? Again, I'm not, this team needs help, but does, do you feel like maybe this team is in a little better spot seeing some of these players emerge, or is it still a major project this off season? I, I don't know if it's a major project. We definitely need the young guys come to come in ready to play, but I do think they need to find an athletic wing that can provide some scoring too. We, they need somebody else that can drive. And Klesmet is probably our best guy off the bounce at going to the rim. They need another guy that can do that. Like a, a nice 6'5", six, 6'6", six, six guy who has some length and can defend and can at least get to the rim on occasion would be great. Like that would be a huge add to this team. And they don't have to be a guy who's going to score 16. But if you can find a guy who can get you nine, that'd be great. That would add a ton to this team. Yeah, to answer your question, I'm very. I think it gives me a lot of hope for next year because of how scrappy we've been and how much heart we've played with. And you know, we're going to return at pretty much everyone. And I just feel like that's, you know, you're still going to have Chucky, you're still going to have Connor, you're still going to have Max. Like that's a, it's going to be very nice to see what we have. And then we got the Gus Bus coming in. We got guys that are going to bring us like you know some good play and. Obviously, the portal is going to be huge. We're obviously going to talk about it when the season's over. We need to hit the portal. We need another big, I think. We definitely need the athletic wing. Justin's totally right. Um, mm -hmm. But, yeah, I think it very much excites me about next year because we're not we've, – we've said it ad nauseum. We're not a good team. We're playing hard. We're fighting close games at Michigan, home against Purdue. I mean, you know, like we're not winning them because we're not good enough, but – you give these guys another offseason, everyone improves. Now you got, you know, Klesman becoming a big player. You bring in guys. Yeah, I'm very excited about next year. I think we're we're going to be in a good spot. Yeah, I think it's all all about finding answers, right? I think we're finding answers with Klesman. I think we're finding answers with Connor. Um, so to me, those are building blocks. And it, that does make me feel certainly better, right? Um, let's get a couple comments here. Max Ferrin says if Wall stays and they get a transfer to, I think this team can be really good next year. 
Zach Bartz, if this team adds depth and plays this hard all of next year, this team could be lethal. The trajectory of this team, I feel, depends on Gray Guard and how the staff attacked this offseason. Uh, definitely agree there. Don't One bat- thing I'll say about that is it is it is very hard as a team to play this hard for an entire season. Like I, I even we even saw it this year with this team. Like that's a lot to ask when you're when you're playing up because that's this team's trying playing the way they are in grit. Like they're, they're they're keeping these games close by mucking up the game and playing super hard to try and and stay with close to the other team. But that takes a toll on a team. So you can only do that for ideally the tail end of the season when when you know you have a lot at stake. Otherwise, you're going to wear down, and by the time you get to the tournament, you're running on fumes. Yeah, and there's certainly games this year where they they did not play this hard, to your point, Justin. Uh, Thomas Miller says, scrappiness and heart doesn't win games. Making layups helps. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> true. Thomas, thank you as always, man, for jumping in. You've been in a lot of comments. So I always appreciate you, man. Jeff Olson says, the Gus bus. I had a comment up earlier that said, uh, they I forget who it was, but they said they watched Gus's highlights. They weren't really impressed. Um, listen, it could be like, I'm, I'm not a fortune teller by any stretch. I think he's going to really impress people next year and be a part of the rotation. I'll say this. I, and I've read that comment too. How many, Ethan Hap, how many Ethan Hap dunks did you see in his high school highlights? Like he's an, he, Gus is not a high flyer. Anyone that's expecting that, I'm sorry. You're going to be, you're not going to be impressed. He does basically, he's about as good as it gets below the rim for a big mm-hmm. man. He's going to be really good. I, 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 really believe that um yeah guys j- j- just for a little conversational fact, i think this comment's interesting um paul kersey says do you think mac throws the bank at mark few or tony bennett i i don't think this happens but i think it's kind of interesting to uh, given the fact that we got such a high profile football coach is there any chance that that mac does this i think the answer to this is no i think he's expressed his support for Greg guard um uh, but it's an interesting thought i mean i you know it, it's it would Knowing what he did with football, you never know. What we've learned is we never know with Chris McIntosh, but I don't think anything like this happens. But it's an interesting comment. Here's the deal with that: neither of the this that's not a step up for either of those guys. It's also like true. He he won a he won a national title. Tony Bennett at Virginia, and Mark Few effectively had is the breadwinner at that right. school, Gonzaga, and is recruiting at a extremely high level. For that, and not not necessarily one of one of these two, but do yeah. you think Chris does anything in the offseason? I guess is the yeah. real question, right? Yeah, that's not happening. So I think all, we'd all agree with that. Yeah, no, I agree with you guys on that as well. Um, Bob Milborn says Gus doesn't play defense. I would say he's a high school. He's still in high school, and I would also say we got enough dudes on this team that play scrappy defense. Like at some point, you need offensive skill. You need people to, to create buckets. And Bob, I'm not trying to discount your point on that. He's going to have to grow at that that level. But he's a really high basketball IQ. He's going to rotate correctly. He's a big body. He's going to get defensive rebounds. But at the end of the day, you need more offense. Like this team is starved for creation, for shot creation, for offensive IQ. And he's going to give you a lot of that. And I'm telling you, call me crazy and come back in a year if I'm wrong. And and let me know. Please do. But I'm telling you, he's going to provide that next year as a freshman. And this team desperately needs offense. There are very few true freshman bigs that are even average on defense when they get get to the uh, division one i'm so high on the gus bus train by the way i i tell i i'm getting like defensive but i think he's gonna be really good as a freshman and that's where i'll leave it i think i don't think he's not going to be a perfect player by any stretch and he's not going to solve all the problems on his team by any stretch either but i think he's going to play can i just say one last thing before we Please. close it 100, yeah, 125 that. people watching thank you guys for for being a part of this and for commenting and for participating and those of you that jumped on the live stream that's great it's super fun. I mean, it's it's awesome to have all you guys in this, and thank you for the support. Why are the numbers always super high when things go poorly? I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's when people need to like oh. They like hearing us be miserable. It's. <laughs> I will say it. It, hel- it helps to just talk about it. I, mean, I, I feel a heck of a lot better about it after the loss because it's it's tough, man. Yeah, and Badger Man, JP Bl- uh, John Blackwell Jr., I like him a lot. I think oh, he's yeah. really underrated. Um, but anyway, let's wrap it up there. I do really appreciate – everybody tuning in to both this and the, the live show we did. We're good. We did a live show today for those that you didn't get to see where we watched the game together, talked about it. That was a lot of fun. We're going to try to do more stuff like that. So look up for that. Um, and then Ryan asked, or Adam asked, where am I getting my Gus bus tattoo right on my forehead right here? So everyone can identify me as a Gus bus guy. But um, I do appreciate everybody tuning in. Like Rajiv said on Wisconsin, we're going to keep it going. This is going to drop. Obviously now there's a, 
John Garcia Jr. interview we did today. That's going to drop tomorrow, so stay tuned for that one. We talked about uh, our favorite 2024 quarterback and what his upside is. Mabry Metower. Metoyer is how you pronounce the name. I've learned this. So we talked about him a little bit. That's a fun conversation. Tune into that one on Wisconsin, and appreciate everybody, Justin and Rajiv, as well. Thank you, gentlemen.